Hello, my name is Robin Mitchell and welcome to this episode for Electromaker. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to build the Electromaker W, which is a Raspberry Pi Pico W powered multimeter. So before we jump into the project itself and figure out how it all works, let's see why it might be useful. Now, we've all used these guys at some point in a project. A multimeter allows us to measure voltages and currents, resistance, and all that kind of jazz. Now, these are great devices. They come from numerous different manufacturers and they all have different features. Now, while they are very, very useful, they do have some issues. And primarily, one of them is trying to use them wirelessly. Now, imagine if you're, let's say, measuring a, oh, I don't know, a junction box with some mains voltage or an IoT circuit, some remote place and you're trying to probe this thing and you want to know what it's doing in real time. Now, obviously, if you're there, that's not an issue. But what if you're, let's say, a mile away? What if you're somewhere else on the planet and you wanted to measure some voltage or current? Now, of course, you do need to have an engineer go over there and set up a multimeter. But imagine if you had one that you could access wirelessly over the network. That would allow you to have so much convenience you know just one quick tap on the browser or a mouse pointer or a simple address on your web browser and suddenly you're at the multimeter able to record and read currents and voltages but of course these ones don't do that and so these can have issues when trying to do projects that even span across a room imagine if you're trying to write down some numbers and you've got the multimeter on one side of the desk your projects over there your computers over here they can be problematic when doing these kind of scaled up projects where stuff is all over the place. Now, not only are they problematic like that, but you can get multimeters that can be accessed over networks and wireless and all that kind of jazz, but these can be extraordinarily expensive. And so this is where the project point comes in. In this project, the goal is to create ourselves a basic multimeter with a few simple functions that can allow us to measure voltage and current from anywhere in the world, as long as it's connected up to the project. And so here we introduce the Electromaker W. This is a wireless multimeter that is based on the Raspberry Pi Pico W, a newly released board by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And we connect this to an external circuit, which then connects to a few different jacks, or I think they're called banana plugs. And this allows us to use probes to measure different currents and voltages. Now, the first thing I would like to stress is I apologize for the hideous design, but I only built it like this to make a demonstration so we could see all the different components and how they work. You could put this in a nice enclosure printed on a 3D printer, but A, I'm not a mechanical engineer, B, ain't nobody got time for that, and C, Honestly, for this demonstration, I don't think it's particularly important. But if you wanted to, you absolutely could. So the Electromaker W multimeter consists of two main sections, the Raspberry Pi Pico W, which provides us with a web server and some reading capabilities for the circuit, and then the circuit itself. Now, the purpose of the circuit is to read voltages and currents from external circuits via these banana sockets, and then they go into here, get converted into a suitable voltage that the Pico can then read. Now, this solution is both dead cheap to make and easy to build, which means that it's a very good solution for those who want a quick way to measure voltages and currents over a wireless network. The Raspberry Pi Pico W hosting a web server allows us to read these voltages and currents in real time and it's also mobile friendly so we can use a mobile laptop computer it doesn't really matter as long as it's got a web browser it can access our multimeter. And finally I was quite surprised how accurate this device is I honestly thought this was just going to be a few parts thrown together to demonstrate how it could be done and then I actually started testing it and I was honestly shockingly surprised pardon the pun. So here is the circuit that's represented by this little board here that connects to the four banana plugs that eventually leads on to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now it's split up into two different types, the voltage reader and the current reader. So this circuit here is used to read voltages from an external source from these two here, while this circuit, the current reader, using the yellow and green banana plugs here, is used to read current from an external circuit. Now, you might think that this bit here is the current reading plug. It's not. That's actually for power. This is where the current reading plug is, and this is where the voltage reading plug is. So in this circuit here, we have two op amps with a bunch of resistors 
and it's configured as a rectifier. So it doesn't matter if the voltage going in is positive or negative, the magnitude of that voltage will always be coming out of this op amp here, U1B. Now, the reason why we have these various 10 k ohm resistors is to make sure that the gain overall is set to about one for both of these guys. So these two resistors here make up an inverting amplifier here, while this one is just a non-inverting amplifier. Now, the really cool thing about this circuit is that by having two different op amps, both of them having unity gain, but one being positive and one being negative, means that no matter if the, if the voltage is positive or negative, one of these will always be producing an output. Now, because these are single supply rails, they can't go negative. Nothing in this circuit can go negative. But what's really cool is that if the input voltage does go negative, this amplifier will amplify it to be positive. Whereas this diode here will make sure that this operational amplifier never receives a negative input because a negative input voltage would actually cause this op amp to break. So the combination of these two circuits on this output here is that no matter if the input voltage is positive or negative, the magnitude of that will always come out on number seven as always positive. To make sure that we can actually read the voltage correctly without damaging the Pico W, we have an output divider here that takes the output voltage from number seven and divides it by 10. Now the reason why we have to do this is because the op amp is powered by a five volt rail. So in theory, the output voltage could go to five volts and that would break the Raspberry Pi Pico W analog input. Therefore, to make sure that that can never happen, we divide it by 10 so that for some reason, if the output was five volts, the output from the divider would be 0.5 volts, which is well within the bounds of what this guy can take. So our Raspberry Pi Pico W can read the magnitude of the input voltage thanks to this rectifier circuit. But how do we detect if this input is negative or positive? Well, there's a really cool feature that we can use thanks to this unity gain amplifier here. U1B will always output the magnitude, so he can't detect whether the input is negative or positive. However, this op amp here can. If the input is positive, then this one will output a positive voltage. If the input is negative, it will get clamped by this diode and the output will always be zero, or thereabouts. As such, all we need to do is read the voltage from this op amp here and see if it goes over a certain value. Therefore, if the input here is positive, then the output of the op amp will be positive, which means this potential divider will produce a positive voltage that can be read up will be over zero volts. Thus, if the Raspberry Pi Pico W detects that there's a positive voltage on this pin here, then we know that the input is positive. If it reads zero and this pin here is larger than this one, then we know it must be negative. Now let's move on to the current reader. The first thing I'll say is to just ignore this circuit here. This is just for power filtering to make sure that the power going into the circuit is nice and smooth. So to measure the current, we have a current to voltage converter, basically an external circuit. If connected to this connector here, the current will flow through, go past this current measuring resistor here, which is one ohm, come back through and come out. This flow of current will cause a voltage drop to occur over R4, which also corresponds to a voltage drop on U2A's input. U2A has been configured as a non-inverting amplifier, so whatever voltage is present on the positive input will be amplified on the output. In this case, we've configured this amplifier to have a gain of 10. This means that for every one volt drop over this resistor will correspond to one amp, which would correspond to 10 volts because it's a one volt drop times by 10. Now, of course, we're not going to work that high. So the maximum currents we're going to be seeing are around 100 milliamps, which would be a 100 millivolt drop, which would be resulting a one volt on the output. To make sure we don't damage the analog input pin for the Raspberry Pi Pico W, we've also got a clamping diode followed by a series resistor. So if the voltage was for some reason five volts, it would get clamped down to 3.3 and this 100 ohm resistor would protect the diode while also helping to clamp the voltage. And thus, that is the circuit represented here. So here we have the Raspberry Pi Pico W Python script that runs our wireless multimeter. Now, the first things we do is configure the pins and set up some variables such as the voltage pin, the positive detect pin and the current pin. At the same time, we also configure our SSID and password for the Wi-Fi network. 
Here, we open up the external file index, stream it into a bit of text, and then close the stream. This is one of the really nice things about MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. We can actually store extra files on the Pico itself as if it was a flash drive. As you can see here, we connect to the network, get our IP address, and then wait for someone to connect. Scrolling down further, we can see the main while loop of our code. Now, I would like to stress that this code has no error correction, no error checking, and it's prone to problems. The reason why I've cut it down as much as I can is to make it simple for others to understand. So you can build upon this if you wanted to. Hell, you could even add things like SSL, but in this case, I mean TLS actually, because I think SSL is the one that's got the bug. But in this case, all you have to do is look at this basic code, understand how and why it works so that you can modify it yourself in the future. So the first thing we do in our infinite loop is try to accept a new client connection. Now, once we've accepted that connection, we then take the request and put it to a string variable. Now, once we've got our request, we now look to see if we can find the content get reading. Now, this is really, really important because our web server can do one of two things. It can either return the index.html file or it can return the current values read by the voltage and current pins. So once we've determined if the reading request has been passed or not, we do one of two different blocks of code. The first one is if it's minus one, meaning it wasn't found, we send the HTML. And if the get reading variable was found, we then take readings from each analog pin. Then we determine if the input voltage was negative or positive based on our negative detection circuit. And then we send that message back to the client. Finally, we close the connection. And if there's some error, we can go ahead and close the connection anyway, but it's not entirely important in this case. And that is all there is to the web server side of our project. The second part of this project is the HTML file that's sent to the user. Now, as you can see here, we have a bunch of styling code for CSS. This is not important. It just styles the table to make it look nice. If we scroll down, there are two pieces of section of code that are very, very important. The first one is the table that represents our readings. And this basically has a voltage and a current status. And if we scroll down, we have a second piece of very important code, which is the JavaScript that runs our web app. Now, this runs on the client side and not on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. And all it's doing is every 500 milliseconds defined by here, which is the set interval function, we call this function here, load doc. And all this does is create another HTTP request from the Raspberry Pi Pico W, but this time it sends the value get readings. Now, if you remember from the code previously, if we find this result in the HTTP request, we get back the voltage and current readings instead of the index HTML file. Once we get the response from the Raspberry Pi Pico W, we then look for the elements called voltage and current in our HTML file and replace the values with the voltage and current respectively. Now you'll notice that we have the split function here. That's because when we receive the voltage and the current values, we also use a colon. I think it's a semicolon or a colon. I'm not sure. These two little dots separate the two values such as this. So you might have a 10 and then you'll have a little colon and then you'll have a 20. So the first one would represent the voltage while the second one would represent the current. So the split function separates those two numbers and we can stick them into two different elements in our original index HTML file, which is found in the table here as ID equals current and here as ID equals voltage. So just to recap, this is the index HTML file that's given to us by the Raspberry Pi Pico W when we first connect with a browser. Once we receive this file, our browser every 500 milliseconds requests new data from the Raspberry Pi Pico W using a HTTP request and passing the get readings variable so that it passes us the voltage and current readings instead of the index HTML file again. Now, if you like what we do here at Electromaker and you want to support the Electromaker educator, myself, then consider going to the electromaker.io store where you can purchase the vast majority of parts found in this project, including the Raspberry Pi Pico. By supporting us, we can keep creating new videos, come up with new project ideas and create educational resources. So before we look at the construction of this project, go ahead and click the pause button, head over to our store, have a quick browse, see what you think, come back, and then let's watch the construction. 
First, the operator chooses a piece of copper clad that should make a good PCB. He then applies double-sided tape to the back of the board to keep it firmly in place in the CNC. Before he places it into the machine, he has to solder a bit of wire into the corner to make some electrical contact with the machine so it knows where the probing surface is. The operator then removes the back part of the double-sided tape and places the board firmly into the machine while also making sure that the wire is connected to the base of the CNC. That way, it can make electrical contact between the probe and the board surface. The operator chooses the appropriate bit for the router, puts it into the routing mechanism and then starts the operation of probing. The operator also applies a small amount of oil to the surface of the board to act as lubrication to increase the lifespan of the router bit. Once the routing stage is complete, the operator then uses a drill bit to drill all the holes for the components. Finally, a router bit is used to cut out the PCB from the main board. The operator removes this board, starts to clean it up and then applies a layer of lacquer to stop the board from oxidizing. Finally, the parts can be sold onto the PCB used in the wider project and there we have our completed unit. So now that we've seen how this project is built and how it works, let's do a quick demonstration to show it working. So the first thing we're going to test is the voltage measuring and I've got myself a battery here com uh, comprised of two 1.6 volt batteries. So the voltage coming from this is about 3.2. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug in the probes for our voltage signal like so. And then we're going to go ahead and probe the battery. Now we're going to do a positive measurement, so black to negative, red to positive. And as you can see on the app, we get about 3.2 volts. Now let's see what happens when we do it the other way around. So it's a negative voltage. As you can see, we get minus 3.2 volts. So now to test the current measuring capabilities, I've got here a 220 ohm resistor and I'm going to put it in series with this battery. So the overall current through this should be about 15 milliamps. Now remember, this can only do positive current, so it's important that the positive side of our circuit is on this connector and the ground on this connector. So we'll do ground there, and we'll do the positive there. And what will happen is we'll connect one part of this resistor to the positive input, like that. We'll then connect the negative uh, probe to the negative pin of the battery and then the positive to here and what we should see is about 15 milliamps and so now we come to the part of the project where we think where could we take this now one thing that immediately springs to mind is if we could integrate some kind of data logging the fact that we can read stuff into the Pico also means that we could log it and store it over a long period of time. We can build this data up on an internal database and then when someone logs into the multimeter, we could then show a graph or a table data of everything that's happened with timestamps. And by doing that, we could turn this into a very, very powerful power monitoring device. Another potential use for the Electromaker W would be to expose the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi Pico W to the outside well so we can both read and write digital values. This would allow us to control external logic circuits and also potentially make this guy a logic analyzer. This could be extremely powerful again for remote operations so we can control digital signals in real time via a web interface and this could effectively become a very powerful logic monitoring device. So not only are we able to monitor the power of a device, we could also monitor the logic state and control it, effectively replacing a microcontroller for some target application. And finally, another little nifty use for something like this would be to integrate it into a problematic device or something that's going to be remote and has a chance of breaking or failing, such as a power converter or maybe something like a, oh, I don't know, a battery backup system for a secondary power source or a building. So you could use something like this to not only check that it's working, but also identify potential issues in the long run. And this could give you some kind of pre-warning uh, signal or advice that it might detect that something's going to go wrong. So all in all, this is a great project for those who want to get started in electronics, who want to learn a bit about programming, as well as analog circuitry. The ability for the Pico W to host websites teaches us a little bit about web apps and how we can host them, 
while the analog circuitry teaches us how we can learn about voltage reading and current readings. All of the parts in this project can be purchased either from Electromaker or Mauser Electronics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.